Auntie, this crooked game we're playing is the bunk. My heck, Gilda, what's come over you? Oh, I don't know. Merck's there again. They've got nothing on me but sick of it. Well, it's spring, honey, and maybe you need some sulfur and molasses. My dear auntie, I have neither dyspepsia nor do I need a spring tonic. I've just been thinking. I know. You haven't been yourself lately. And a line in that book decided me. It takes a tough guy to go straight. All right, I'm tough. I can work. And I've proved that I can use my head for something more than a half rank. Well, you'll miss the easy money. Uneasy, you mean. And at the end of the year, I'll have a credit balance instead of having to compete with the Bureau of Engraving to pay my debts. But what are you going to do about me? You'll still be my auntie. That Boston accent you've acquired has become a habit now. Yes, and so is this darn hook rug. I've been hooking on it for five years. And the end isn't nearly in sight yet. Keep it up. You're my hallmark of respectability. I'll need you more than ever now. And stop snapping that gum. Oh, all right. What, are you going to be an artist? No, business. I got it all figured out. But first, we're going to give New York the air. So we won't be bumping into Burke or any other flatfoot. Hello? Yes, Jason. What's the bad news? Uh-huh. All right. Send Charlie for me. Back alley. Burke is still watching out front. All right. Brewster wants to see me. Are you going to tell him? Just as well, sir. Ain't you afraid they'll double-cross you? Hardly. I'll have left for parts unknown before they can pull any rust up. Let us start to pack. And this time, don't take anything that doesn't belong to us. Why, Gilda? <laughs> well, let me start the undressing act for Burke. Nothing more we can do tonight. She's going to bed. You sure of that? Unless she's going to do a Lady Godiva. Every time I sign my own name, I feel like a criminal. And when you sign someone else's? Then at least he can claim to be an artist. Quite wrong, Wally, my boy. Art begins where imitation ceases. The federal man didn't think so when we put that last batch of 20s into circulation. You know, Jason, there are times when you distress me immeasurably. If we had shown less art and more imitation, the deception would never have been discovered. And now we wouldn't be turning our attention to a more crude form of crime. No crime need be crude. It is, however, always a reflection of its perpetrator. Does that apply to this? I bow to you as an engraver, Wadi, but not as a wit. That must be Gilda. Good evening, Brewster. Hello, everybody. May I present Mr. Sims, Gilda, and Harry, respectively? I've been anxious to meet you. We're jammed, and I've had to wait here listening to a lot of baloney about art. Harry has more feeling in his fingers than in his head. Combination locks? I could feel a pin drop on a concrete foundation. And that's no idle boast. But the trouble is, we can't find the safe for him to open. What is this, a gag? Not at all. If you hadn't been so unsociable lately, 
you would know what we're up to. I've been doing quite a bit of thinking lately. Good. Take your hat off and cool your fevered brow. No, thanks. I can't stay very long. But I do want to talk to you. Well, we could do with some bright ideas. I'm full of them. While we have been more or less hibernating since the federal authorities became so anxious to meet us, I found out about a veritable treasure. Chester Madison, whose mansion you no doubt know from the outside, has a collection of jewels that would make your mouth water. Hmm. This is a departure from our usual routine, isn't it? That's why Harry has joined us. Proving that the pen is not, my dear. Don't then. talk about the pen. It makes me nervous. Well, you wouldn't be nervous if you banked that furnace occasionally. And we'd all breathe easier. Thank you, Waddy. But to continue, Gilda, we know the jewels are in Madison's safe. We know where the safe is, and yet we can't find it. <laughs> Sounds silly, doesn't it? The safe is in the library, and yet it isn't. At least 200,000 bucks in cracked ice just for the taking. Did you ever try saying, hey, presto, or open sesame? Will you try being serious? We've tried everything. Harry, bring those flashlight photos of Madison's library. You took photos of it? We've been over every inch with a fine tooth comb. And the only thing we caught was Waddy. <laughs> I might resent that if it weren't for the pitiful sight of the great Brewster begging for help. Well, even the worm will turn. But Waddy's right. We need you to help us out. These will show you the library from every angle. Thanks for the compliment, Brewster. But I'm sorry to tell you, nothing doing. Cold feet? No. I just came along tonight to personally present my resignation. What? After our long and pleasant association, I feel a lump rising in my throat as I speak the words. From now on, I'm going to be a good little girl. We haven't by any chance turned stool pigeon. Oh, that's just too crazy for words. All right. That's your funeral. Or hers. You know I'll always be as close as a clam. Unless someone scared you. That's one thing no one can ever accuse me of. Least of all you, being scared. I'm not totally lacking in perception, Gilda. You have put up a good bluff even when you were jittery. When was I jittery? Of course, we took into consideration that you were a girl. But we've known for a long time that you're far from the Lady Raffles you'd have us believe you. What are you driving at? The truth always hurts. That big bone-headed detective Burke has scared you stiff. Would you pass up a fortune if you weren't suffering from a bad attack of nerves? Yes, better see a good nerve specialist, Gilda. They told me they thought you were going to break. Oh, <laughs> we knew it. You've been slipping for weeks ever since Burke's been watching you. You lie, Brewster, and you know it. Tell me any job I'm a scared to tackle. Name one. This one. I tell I'll you... I'll tell you what I'll do. You show me what a bunch of pikers you really are. Now I'll show you something. Give me three days and I'll have the Madison jewels. And I'll do it myself in my own little way. Without any help from a bunch of nitwits. And that, my boys, is doing it the easy way. Is there anything you wish before I go out, sir? Nothing, Matthews. Thank you, sir. My fault in town. I trust I didn't uh, injure you. Ah, oh, it is so nice to find a polite American gentleman. The others are so gauche. Well, perhaps Monsieur is not American. He is French, huh? Oh, uh, not exactly. But on my many visits to Paris, I was bound to acquire the manner and accent of the Parisian. Ah, I thought there was something. You have the air of a cosmopolitan. I am very content that I meet you. Now, bonjour, monsieur. Bonjour. Oh, perhaps you could...
can tell me where is this uh, uh, Columbus Circle? There is a newspaper there, no? I got to put in what you call the uh, petite annonce for position as lady's maid. You give me the privilege of, you allow me to conduct you there. You are very kind, monsieur, thank you. Might I suggest a little refreshment before we cross the park? Oh, thank you, you make me very happy, monsieur. What would you wish, Uh, vermouth cassis. No. The vermouth cassis, oui, monsieur. I may be able to help you. I have considerable influence in the houses of the better people. Quel drôle à dire. I want one of you for my very own. Two gentlemen from the police force to see you, sir. From the police force? Yes, sir. Show them in. Good afternoon, Mr. Nuts. Good afternoon, gentlemen. What can I do for you? You are employing as butler a man by the name of Charles Matthews. Yes. At the request of Scotland Yard, we have traced a notorious English jewel thief who has gained admission into several homes on the strength of a forged testimonial from the late Lord Delisle. That's your butler, I think. Might I trouble you to ring for him? You rang, sir? What do you know about this, Matthew? Come on, Jim. I guess you've got a nice trip to London coming to you. But there's something wrong, sir. My name's not James. I haven't done anything. Tell that to the court. Put the bracelets on. By the way, sir, this guy wouldn't be here unless for a good reason. Have you anything of particular value? Jewels are his weakness. Of course I have. An exceptional collection. Nothing safe from this guy. You better see that you have him before we leave. Mr. Madison, I wouldn't go near the safe. Please, gentlemen, turn your back. I wouldn't move if I were you, Mr. Madison. Matthews!
Nothing rounds off a dinner like Café Diable. <laughs> I hope it's as good as it smells. The making of Café Diable is almost a lost art. And no one who tastes this will doubt that I am an artist. I got to listen to more of this artist stuff. Say, where is the girl with the jewels? Patience, laddie. It's all right to say have patience, but you've got Gildas so riled that she's liable to do anything. Calm yourself, Jason. Your namesake had to search for the Golden Fleece, while Gilda will bring its equivalent to you. You've got more faith in her than I have. I've opened more safes than she's ever seen, and I was stumped. But you don't know Gilda. I do. You think you do? Well, it's your funeral, or hers. So you've remarked several times, Smokey. But it would be foolish to uh, dispense with Gilda without an attempt to keep her in line. Here, try this. Do you think she's on the level about quitting this racket? Gilda is always sincere. But this Madison job, which remember I got her to try, puts her just where I want her. Clever little fellow. But I had expected to hear from her by now. Wait a minute. I'll answer it. Mm -hmm. Hello? Miss Gillespie? Oh no, this is the apartment maid. Miss Gillespie, she packed her trunks and leave here this morning. Where? Oh, je ne sais pas. I just clean up the mess she leaves. <coughs> Where are the jewels? She skipped town. That means she's got them and double-crossed us. I tell you, we have to get to her quick. Where did she go? You think she left an address? But I'll catch up with her. And when I do... Now you're talking my language. I've told you before, no more ballyhoo. Where's the ladies' home journal I bought you? Do you think I am a campfire girl? No, but you're going to be. Have you got everything? Yes, dearie. Well, California, here we come. California? Oh, yes, I forgot to tell you. Hollywood? Mm-hmm. Oh, no. You keep that face of yours out of the movies. You're telling me? Oh, no. It's business for mine. And if I'm to be a success, the more businessmen I meet, the better. I've come to the conclusion that the place for me is in the bank. Oh, I swallowed my gum. Oh, come <laughs> on. There's only one person that could have done this job, and I know where to find her. Her? A woman? Yes, I think we'll chasse la femme. Why, you, sir? The express messenger wouldn't say who it was from. Excuse me. Look! My jewels! Well, this is a new one on me. Are they all there? Can't tell yet. But I believe they are. Well, women have got no business being crooks. who says we're not from Boston. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> I was out before five this morning and got a couple more good sketches. Oh, I thought that's where you were. I love California. Particularly on these unusual sunshiny mornings. <laughs> you get up now when, when you used to be going to bed.
Any mail? No. Well, so much for advertising for a job. Oh, don't you worry. I'm not worried. I'll just have to go around until somebody gives me a job, that's all. Didn't I tell you no more ballyhoo? Where's that lady's home journal I bought you? Well, there's no one around. Burn it at once. You finish your hook rug. You'd rather finish a hooker of scotch. Auntie, I'm shocked. But I forgive you because you're still a great cook. Well, you, you haven't eaten a thing. I know, but I want to get downtown before 9 o'clock. The early bird that catches the worm, you know. Yes, but... Who wants a worm? Now, is that nice? <laughs> Wish me luck. Good luck. we met today. Had any luck? Mm, jobs seem to be scarcer than hen's teeth. Well, I've been trying banks mostly. I didn't know there were so many in the world. Well, they're thicker than filling stations. Yes. But the welcome one gets is a lot different. Talk about the glassy stare. Mm, you said it. Here, I have another. Oh, no thanks. But I just realized that I am hungry. I'll go and get some lunch. Sit down. Cut out the bluff. Oh, you're a grand scout, really, but I'm not bluffing. See you again this afternoon, maybe. Okay, miss. Well, help me take her to my car. Get back there, will you? Come on. <laughs> Mr. Rhodes. I've told you already there are no vacancies. But that was this morning. You have one now. Your secretary's in the receiving hospital. She was hurt in an accident. Will you step in here, please? Which hospital? Georgia Street. Get me the Georgia Street Hospital. How do you know all this? The policeman asked me to drive her there. Did you see the... Hello? This is Rhodes of the Citizens National Bank. I understand my secretary, Miss Billings, had an accident. How is she? Well, tell her not to worry. I'll keep her place for her. Pay will go on just the same. Tell her also I'll be over as soon as possible to see her. The bank, of course, will pay all bills. Thank you. Goodbye. She's more frightened than hurt. I'm glad. Now, have you any references? Yes, sir. Oh, New York. How long have you been here? Just a week, sir. Oh, a week. Miss Parsons, will you step in here, please? Well, you, you seem to have given eminent satisfaction to your previous employers. If you're as alert as you were in this instance, I think there's a place for you here. Oh, well, Miss Brown, Miss Parsons. How do you, How do, you do? do? Miss Billings has had an accident. I want you to take her place. Will you explain your work to Miss Brown and report to me here, please? I often told Billings to watch where she was going. She probably had her mind on her work, Miss Parsons. Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Oh, you saw the accident. Uh, how did it happen? Why, uh, Miss Billings was trying to get through an awful jam and lost her head. She started forward, and then she jumped back right in front of a car. And I took her to the hospital. That was very kind of you. Will you report to Miss Parsons, please? Thank you, Mr. Rhodes. Mr. 
Well, I'm ready to start. What's your first name? Mary. Okay, Mary. This is the monthly statement file here. And these are the overdue notes. Plenty of them, too. Come on, I'll introduce you around to the other department. Thank you. Pardon me. I heard Miss Billings had been hurt. Will there be a vacancy for a stenographer? Too late, miss. The girl that took her to the hospital got the job. Gee, I wish I had that job of yours back. Oh, I should think you'd be glad of the promotion. Yeah, but dates mean something, too. The guy Rhodes doesn't know when to go home. Just sits there doing nothing till it grows dark. Well, perhaps he has a lot of things on his mind. Oh, he's got something on his mind, all right. And it ain't me. Don't think I mean anything personal. That guy doesn't even know we're human. Always proud. That's Briggs, teller at number three. Yeah? Uh, will you bring over Forbes' statement? All right, just a moment, please. Bill is counterfeit. What bill are you talking about? That one, that $20 bill just under your hand. Huh? If I can't pick out a counterfeit bill after all these years, I ought to resign. What do you want to rattle me for? That bill counterfeit? Well, you don't know what you're talking about. But it is counterfeit. Examine the engraving. It's good, though by no means perfect. But look how the ink is off color, especially the green. It's just an old bill. Artificially aged. We'll go in and see Mr. Rhodes. Will you take his word for it? Mr. Rhodes, I feel foolish to ask you this, but Miss Brown insists this bill is counterfeit. Looks all right to me. And judging by the handling it's had to a lot of other people. Well, let me show you the defects, Mr. Rhodes. First, take the engraving. Look at the defect here and there. That machining was touched up by hand. Am I right? Hmm, I'm afraid you are. Now look along the surface. There. Do you think they're all printing and engraving? Do you? Oh, I... I don't see what you mean. Bring me another of the same issue, Mr. Briggs. Why, the paper is perfect. Mm-mm. There are hairs in it. Dog hairs, I think. Wait a minute, I'll try to pick one out. Now take your glass. You're right. That is hair, not silk. That was the downfall of one man. I'm afraid I don't follow you. Well, a counterfeiter once foolishly used the hair of his own dog, and it led the federal agents right to the plant. Really? Mm, at least uh, I saw it in a movie as an authentic case. Oh. Well, thank you. Now look at the color. Compare them. Briggs, she's right. I wonder how many of these we've passed. I don't know, sir. And she picked it from the other side of the cave. I ought to be able to. We got one of those in New York once, and the imitation was so good that I studied every line of it and inquired how it was done. I was determined I wouldn't be fooled twice. Uh, Miss Brown. Yes, Mr. Rhodes. That'll be all, Briggs. Thank you. I want to thank you in the name of the bank and tell you how much I personally appreciate your alertness. I, oh, I beg your pardon. Oh, we do thank you, Miss Brown, and I shall see that the matter is brought to the attention of the directors. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Mr. Rhodes. been 
coming home much later for the past few weeks. Well, Miss Parson, my secretary, resigned tonight. Why? Well, she has a deep-rooted objection to allowing business to interfere with pleasure. <laughs> and for someone to put in her place? Well, Miss Brown is the logical choice. She deserves it, but... But what? Well, she's only been with us a few weeks, and... You know, Mother, that girl fascinates me. I wish I could psychoanalyze people. See what makes them tick? Yes. Isn't she like any other woman? No, she demands a logical reason for everything. Thank you. Well, you have your intuition, Mother, which is much better. You don't know anything about her? No, but I'd say she'd never been dominated. In fact, it's amusing to see how she tries to control in a naturally imperious manner. Maybe she's a princess in disguise. Yeah, maybe she is. <laughs> what do the others think of her? They like her. Then why hesitate about making her your secretary? What you mean to tell me is that you've fallen in love with Rhodes. That's what makes it so hard. Now I may have to leave the bank. I'd never considered love before, so it meant nothing. I don't know what to say. There is nothing to say, nothing to do, except hope that it turns out to be nothing but a passing fancy. <laughs> this horse racing racket proves Barnum was right. Any racket's good when you're on the inside. Yeah, well, give me safes. Listen, we stand to make the biggest cleanup Belmont Park has ever paid off. If Preston plays our game. Yeah, see? But why doesn't he wire? Ah, this time yet. Look at these figures. The smart money is going solid on flashlight. Preston's wire. Good evening, Mr. Brewster. Good evening. What's the dope for tomorrow? Save your money. In a bank. What a setup. Pack up, boys. We're leaving for California as soon as we've made this killing. I've located Gilda working in bank here. Stop. Is it your funeral or hers? Stop. Wire instructions. Good old Smokey. Good morning. Good morning. Hampstead 3171. Hello. Oh, it's you, Gilda. Say, what? where were you this morning? I came right to the bank. Oh, I can do without breakfast. Yes, I feel much better now. I came across an old adobe house beside some eucalyptus trees. And I looked so wistful and wise that I became very unimportant. Yeah, on the contrary, you're becoming more important. Well, I'll call you later, Auntie. Miss Parsons resigned last night, and I want you to take her place. This is to be your office. Oh, thank you. Well, why did Miss Parsons resign? Well, it seems that I interfered with her dates. Are these your sketches? Did you do these? Mm-hmm. Don't blame me for being surprised, but these sketches are exceptionally good. Thank you. Your technique is extremely interesting. Are you flattering me? Well, you know enough to know that your work is good. When do you leave? Oh, I often go out in the morning for an hour or two. I found such a delightful subject this morning that I almost forgot to come to work. But why, with this ability, are you working as a stenographer? I used to draw for a living. Did you do any etching? Yes, but... The intricate detail work was ruining my eyes. Oh, that's too bad. I'm somewhat of an artist myself, though I'm more appreciative than creative. Well, you're certainly appreciative. Oh, thank you. I pride myself on having one of the finest collections of etchings in the West. I thought a banker would be more interested in engraving. Oh, you'd be surprised at what some bankers are really interested in. <laughs> 
Hello? Mr. Fisher. Oh, I'll take that call in my private office. Mr. Rose will take the call in his private office. with Gilda on the inside. Don't let her see us. We'll come back later. Right. Hello, Burke. So you're enjoying our California sunshine. Well, this is an unexpected pleasure. I didn't expect to see you down here this morning. I wanted to see the girl you were in love with. Mother. Oh, don't be foolish, Bill. Don't you think I have eyes and ears? And then I've had to listen to a nightly eulogy on Miss Brown? Well, I'll be... No, you won't. I've always had faith in you, but I wanted to meet you. Bill, dear, she's splendid. But how did you know who, which? I pretended to be taken ill, and though she didn't know who I was, she was all sympathy and was sincere. Incidentally, I found out something that probably you don't know. Yes? Well, what's that? She's in love with you. Oh, Mother, that's ridiculous. Well, we've always been quite impersonal, except perhaps when we talked about her sketches. More qualifications. That's something you haven't told me. Well, that only happened this morning. She's an artist. I mean just that, a real artist. She not only can draw, but she has feeling. Why? Her every work is a mood, a fancy. Come in. Mr. Rose, here the statement you asked for. Miss Brown, I should be very glad if you and your aunt would dine with us Thursday. William is most anxious to show you his etching. Well, thank you, Mrs. Rose. That's very kind of you, but I... That's great. There'll be quite a few artistic people there. I'm sure you'll be interested. Thursday, then, dear. Thank you. Who's that girl that just went by? Any of your business? Well, what of it? That was Miss Brown. Oh, Miss Brown, eh? Work here? Yes. She was the Rose's secretary. Collect all the deposits before we close. We'll start using the new forms tomorrow. Yes, miss. You're right, Smokey. She's inside and how? Yeah, I'm talking to Burke. You guys will wish yet to take my advice. Come on. All right, miss. I'll attend to that, too. Thank you, Tim. Hello, Gilda. I beg your pardon. Well, I can't figure it out. She's more like Gilda Gillespie than Gilda is herself. No wonder she didn't know me if it isn't her. Say, do they give badges to guys like you in New York? Now listen, small timer, I... Now don't you think the question of financing should be considered? Well, that's a very intricate question. You see, banking systems throughout the whole country... Well, now we... Rose. What do you think as a banker? Well, I'm afraid I didn't hear you. Zarabella here has been trying to convince me that no woman has ever made a great etcher. And yet I once thought I had discovered a genius. It was shortly after I left the Bureau of Engraving in Washington and gone to New York. Uh, she came in answer to my advertisement. A model? No, a pupil. My first pupil. My small savings were gone, you see, and I had to live. Uh, she wanted to learn engraving and accepted my terms with such lack of hesitation that I immediately was sorry I hadn't asked for more. <laughs> what did you say about bankers? Oh, but I was starving. I never heard of a starving bank. <laughs> Already she could draw beautifully, and what I thought would be drudgery turned out to be a joy. Oh, she was an artist, I assure you. That coming from you means something. Who was she? Soon she had learned all I could teach her, every process, every detail. Oh, she was a genius. 
and it was only a matter of time before she would be infinitely better than her teacher. Now, we'll take that with a grain of salt, but go on. The world has acclaimed me a great etcher. No? The greatest. I thank you. I think I'm pretty good, but seriously, my friends, that girl could have become far greater. Well, what stopped her? She disappeared. Well, didn't you try to find her? Most certainly. I did everything I could, but with no avail. Then I met her in a strange way. I shouldn't have said that she had learned all I could teach her. One night, after I had given up hope, I was returning home. Mrs. Arabella! Marion! Please come with me. I need your help. Where have you been? Nobody knew you at the address you gave. What have you been doing? Get in the taxi and I'll explain. I'm sorry to treat you in this undignified manner. What was it? The most complete counterfeiting plant I have ever heard of. All the machinery for engraving, printing, coloring, and aching spurious currency were there, and many samples of exquisite work in bills of high and low denomination. She must have been good. A good little bad girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they had encountered uh, technical difficulties, however, and wanted my help to overcome them. I indignantly refused. <laughs> you will, or you'll never leave here alive. I've told you no. Stop. There's not going to be any rust up here. Ah, there won't be, if you'll put us straight. You heard me. The twenties are good enough. Yeah, but Gilda. So it's Gilda now. Never mind the sarcasm. We're going to take you back, all right. But if you do any talk... I shall notify the police at once. What'll you tell them? Where do you think you are? You'll tell a lot. You had your nerve, old man. I was sufficiently angry, safely but rudely deposited near my door. And before I could uncover my eyes, the taxi was gone. Is that the last you saw of her? Yes. I notified the police, but I could give no idea where the place was. I'm so sorry your aunt couldn't come. Is she ill? Just a slight headache. Oh, that's too bad. Bill. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Sorry. I'm so glad you've come. But I had no idea there'd be such a crowd. Oh, excuse us, Mother. Now, whom would you like to meet first? Oh, I know. Ah, oh, good evening. This is a pleasant surprise. Hello, Mr. Fisher. Senor Zarabella, I want you to meet a kindred soul, Miss Brown. I've already had the pleasure of meeting Signor Zarabella. As a matter of fact, I had the honor of being his first pupil. In spite of your goodness in calling it an honor, I'm afraid we will have to qualify your statement just a little. All our friends will think you are a very terrible person. Really? Why so? I've just been telling of an experience I had before I opened the school where you were the first to register. And now you want to rob me of all the glamour of a perfect entrance. Yes, but the girl I was telling about was a counterfeiter. That, by your remark, is the honor you claim. Well, how thrilling. You never told me. What do you mean, disappointing us? We were all prepared for the thrilling experience of dining with a famous forger. <laughs> <laughs> well, I believe Rhodes and Zarabella staged the whole thing just to give us a thrill. It did look staged now that I think about it, the way they started. Well, I'm innocent. Did you and Zarabella rehearse this? I swear I haven't seen Senor Zarabella since I came to sunny California. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll try to believe you, but remember, this is Hollywood. <laughs> I ate so much, I'd like to curl up on a pillow and purr. Well, after dinner, walk a mile. Oh, you're wrong. It's after lunch, walk a mile. After dinner, rest a while. Oh, it isn't. It is. It isn't. <laughs> well, you'll have to pardon me, but I want you to see these etchings. Mm, I'm very eager to see them. 
Marion, Le Gros, or Whistler. Oh, Alfred East. That's one of my favorites. And well, it might be. They should all be favorites. Well, as a matter of fact, they are. Gettys, Wilkie, Daubini, Brackmore, but especially Guy Wiggins. I often wish McQuerta could have done. McQuerta? I don't know his work. Beautiful silver birches. Nobody ever caught their wispaloniness as he did. You like wistful things, don't you? What a gem. Mary. Please don't. Sorry, forgive me. Well, I'm not reproaching you. I'm very proud and very... Oh, never mind. What's done is done. You do like me a little, don't you? I'm not a great lover, but I love you greatly. I'll make you a pretty good husband. Well, I think we'd better get back to the drawing room with the others. I think Miss Brown tell me quite an air. She must have a very interesting background. Yes, I'm very fond of her. Bill is too, or I miss my guess. Yes. They've been gone a long time. would be glad to have Bill marry. My mother likes to lose her son. But I know that when the time comes, Bill will choose the right woman. Here they come now. Well, what's the latest gossip from the sewing circle? We hear there's <laughs> going to be a tax on bachelors. <laughs> that will give a lot of us hope. Won't you play a rubber? No, thank you. I really must go. I don't want to leave Auntie alone so long. Good night, Mrs. Rhodes. I'm leaving early for Palm Spring. If I may, I'll call a taxi. Why a taxi? I pass your hotel. Well, there you are. A car, a charming chauffeur, a chaufferette, or <laughs> what is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll be delighted. Well, if you'll excuse me, I'll Good night. <laughs> I gave you some good cards. Yes, indeed you did. Good <laughs> man. <laughs> Good night. Good night. What was your object in lying to get me out of that jam tonight? First, I'd like to ask you a few questions. Well? Why are you here under what is probably another assumed name? If I told you, you wouldn't believe me. May I venture a guess? Go ahead. I knew you were intelligent, persevering, and loved beauty. You had all the qualities that go to make success. Therefore, I knew you could not be a criminal. What have I done to suffer these bromides? You don't seem to understand. I mean, you weren't normal when I last met you. You found out your mistake, and you came out here to start anew. I'm sorry I ever thought you were seeking revenge. I sought revenge. Oh, I wish you taught me ethics instead of etchings. <laughs> Did you ever hear of Duncan Gillespie? The engraver? Certainly. He was my father. Your father? You probably recall the case, too. Papers made enough of his conviction for counterfeiting. Did you ever see any flaring headlines when his innocence was discovered and he was released to die? I cried out for revenge. Blind, unreasoning revenge. And look what it has made me, an outcast. You are exaggerating. You see, I had a talk with Rhodes about you, and he suspects nothing. That's apparent. Tonight he asked me to be his wife. Oh, I sensed something. So you see, you have very little to worry about. Little? Are you crazy? Do you think I accepted him? And yet there's nothing in a woman's life as great as love. The only words that mean anything to me. I must tell him never to repeat. Don't you think Rhodes might be told and understand? Don't you dare.
Is there anything else before I go? A new blotter, perhaps? Yes, I have rather ruined it, haven't I? It's all your fault. I wish you'd forget about last night. I'd rather not. Mary. Yes, Mr. Rhodes? Oh, I know these are office hours, but let's put this under the head of new business. Persistent, aren't you? It's the Irish in me. Scotch often has the same effect. Mary, you're only acting. Not at all. No need to dramatize ourselves. No, I suppose not. After all, I'm the loser. I feel it more deeply than you do. I understand. There's someone else, and you don't want to hurt me, is that it? Uh, yes. You're the loveliest little fibber and the worst actress in the world. A girl doesn't hang her head because two men love her. You can't hide it from me. There is no one else. Oh, Mary, why didn't you accept me last night? I couldn't do a thing all day. Well, I know you haven't done anything all day. And you're way behind. I should make you work tonight. No, Mary, not tonight. I think I'd rather be alone this evening. All right, then I'll come down with a new incentive because you'll be everywhere. And then I'll see in the morning how much you've done. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Bill. Hello, Gilda, darling. Smokey. Jason! Nancy, meeting you here. What a coincidence! What are you doing here? What do you want? Uh, we don't want to lose you now that we've found you. Welcome home, Gilda. Well, this is indeed a pleasure. What do you want, Brewster? So you've got a nice job, eh? In a bank, too. Well, I'm glad to hear it. In fact, we're all glad, aren't we, boys? And we're proud to know that one of us could get on the inside of the biggest bank in the city without the use of a crowbar. But surely it's too big a job to handle alone. And you know our work, systematic and efficient. You're wasting your breath, Brewster. I told you I was through with all this. And you know I mean what I say. But you must admit it looks uh, suspicious, you're working in a bank. Why can't you let me alone? We have, and we'll continue to leave you alone. But the combination of the vault wouldn't be too much to ask, just to even up the little Madison affair. Nothing doing. Well, whether you cooperate or not, we've decided on the Citizens National Bank. We have our plans all laid. Then what'll happen to you? I wouldn't if I were you, Brewster. Oh, I see. You're going to talk out of turn. Well, I'll simply have to tell him that you're just one of the gang working on the inside. Remember what I told you? It's either her funeral or ours. Didn't we tell you we saw her in a huddle with Burke and the bank guard? It's a lie. I bluffed Burke and he thought I was somebody else. I wondered about that. Take a tumble to yourself, Gilda. You're really wasting your time. Think it over, eh? We want you with us. You know a good thing when you see it. And the results of stupidity are terrible, Gilda. Terrible. What's got into you, Brewster, anyway? Well, we should never have brought her here. You all right if we took her out feet first? You're a bloodthirsty egg. But I believe you're right. The best thing to do is to pull the job tonight, get out of town, and let her hold the bag. Don't be a lot of mugs. The girl's on the level and scared stiff of being discovered. Don't kid yourself, Brewster. I can open that vault. Let's pull the job tonight and beat it. Why do it the hard way? Hello? Hello? Mary? The 
bank has been robbed. The police just phoned. Bill hasn't been home all night, and he's nowhere to be found. Are the police there now? Yes, I'll go right down. All right, I'll meet you at the bank. What's happened, honey? Why, well, you look like you've seen a ghost. What is it? It's Brewster. He's robbed the bank. And Bill is missing. Have you heard from Bill yet? Oh, dear. No, not a word. Oh, now, don't get upset. Uh, Work the combination. Looks like an inside job. Whoever cut the alarm wires do his job all right. He connected both ends of the circuit before he got the cable. Maybe it was one of the employees. Darling, everything's going to be all right. Right. I'm Sandburn, the president. What did they get? Can't tell yet. It looks like a clean haul. I told Rhodes not to keep those Santa Fe bonds here. $350,000 worth of bonds. Where is he? He's disappeared. Patron Davis here, so I'm going to enter the bank at 11.30. Wherever he is, I know he's doing what's right. Oh, I'm sure he is. Cashier is checking up now. He believes there is over a hundred thousand in cash. If you think Mr. Rhodes had anything to do with this, you're wasting your time. Well, there's not a mark on the vault door, and I know of no yet could open it without soup. I know one that could. But he was in New York when I left. Harry Sims. I saw two of the same gang here a week ago. Did you find anything else, Frank? Yes, uh, spots of blood on the desk. What desk? Rhodes' desk. Other spots on the carpet are rubbed off, but the ones on the mahogany went unnoticed. Of course, that could be a plant. You killed my boy. No, they wouldn't kill him. Because I know who did this. I thought you did. All right, Burke. I'll lead you to them. My hope to Mr. Rhodes. How do you know about this? He knows. Oh, what's the use? I bluffed you, but I'm Gilda Gillespie, all right. What is all this, Burke? Well, this is no time for questions. We've got to act and act quickly. Right, you lead the way. It's not as easy as that. I know the gang. This place is being watched and every move telephoned to Brewster. Oh, smart guys, eh? Yes. And they'd be gone before we got there. They might even kill Mr. Rhodes if I'm not there. Where is this place? 218 Cabot, near Madison. I'll pretend to take Mrs. Rhodes home and then double back. They'll let me in. Now you're talking. Davis, call the station for a squad car. Don't be afraid, will you? I'll try now. I'll bring Bill back safe and unharmed. I'll stall the gang until you get there with your men. Come on, darling. You must have given them quite a severe belt, Smokey. Oh, he'll wake up soon. Maybe. Hello? Hello, Brewster. Gilda's left with the old lady. Taking her home, I guess. She looked all in. I followed them a little ways and stopped her phone. Okay, Jimmy. I'd like to know just how much we got. Well, we'll soon find out. And if it leaves your fluttering heartstrings, Gilda has taken Mrs. Rhodes home. Only one thing leaves my fluttering heartstrings. You know, Smokey, I believe you rather enjoy killing people. Let's be that awful pipe. Hello? All right, Jimmy. That'll be all. The cops have gone back to headquarters. Not a clue. I'll bet they've already pinned it on roads. The dumb clucks. Who is it? Gilda, let me in quick. What's the idea? What's the idea of you coming around here? Did you bring any cops? Welcome to our city. You win. I always do. Hmm, some hall. Gee, this makes me feel good. The good die young. Oh, hello, Smokey. That reminds me, what have you done with Rhodes? I'm not mixing up on any rough stuff. Now, don't worry. Smokey gave him rather a severe belt over the head. A little harder than necessary, perhaps. Not hard enough. Where is he? <gasps> Bill! 
Bill. Bill, what have they done to you? Where are we, Mary? Not so loud. They're in the next room. They'll hear you. Cut these ropes. Cut them. I don't care if there are a dozen of them. Now, Cut don't the get excited. I have a better plan. He's back on again. Hiding someplace. Hiding in my eyes. Get an ambulance for this fellow. Okay, Chief. Bullet holes. Come on, give me a hand on this. Oh, yeah. How serious is it? Just a slight flesh wound. The doctor will soon be here, Mr. Rhodes, so don't worry. Poor kid. Oh, this is silly. I didn't mean to faint. You'll be all right. Darling. Oh, you mustn't. I've already confessed to the police who I am. Well, then you really are the girl Arabella told about. Oh, now I understand a lot. But why did you confess to the police? You had nothing to do with this robbery. She knew of this hideout. Kept still until she learned you were hurt. Mary. Gentlemen, Miss Brown has undoubtedly been of great assistance to you in making this capture, but I would prefer that you took all the credit to yourselves. I'd rather that she had no publicity at all. You understand? Quite. Good luck, Miss Brown. Thank you. From now on, the name will be Rhodes, Captain. Let me be the first to congratulate you. Thank you. And let me be the second. Hey, wait a minute. Where can I find a justice of the peace at this unearthly hour? Unearthly is right. It's heavenly. 